At SIGGRAPH 2007, Valve released a paper titled Improved Alpha-Tested Magnification for Vector Textures and Special Effects, in which Chris Green presents a technique for tackling a common issue with rendering vector-like shapes, or glyphs as he calls them in the paper. The issue is a familiar one, and it's that clean alpha lines, particularly diagonals and curves, require a lot of texture resolution to look smooth. The jagged stepping that you'll see on diagonal lines is made extra obvious in this example from Valve's paper. The solution to this problem, detailed over the next four pages of densely packed text, is actually remarkably simple. And while I've used this technique on a few projects to date, I'm still not sure it's being utilized enough. So let's talk about signed distance fields. A signed distance field, or SDF for short, is a texture where each pixel is encoded with a value representing that pixel's distance to a boundary. For example, here's a one-bit alpha texture. If we give each black pixel a value representing its distance from a white pixel, we end up with this. This is a distance field, but we want a signed distance field. Here, signed just refers to the fact that we want positive and negative values to be encoded. And so far we only have positive distance outside of our boundary. So let's encode each pixel based on distance, but this time the boundary will be mid-gray. And pixels inside the shape will use the range above that, and pixels outside of the shape will use the range below it. And there we have our signed distance field. There are a bunch of ways to generate signed distance fields. Here's how you can do it in Substance Designer, for example, using the Distance node. You can also use this layer style in Photoshop on a layer that contains the shape you want to encode. But these are expensive pieces of software, and I much prefer to use free and open source examples for these videos. So here's how you can do it in Material Maker. A pay-what-you-want alternative to Substance Designer with some really unique and powerful features of its own. I highly recommend checking it out. I also had a go at making my own tool for generating distance fields with Godot. The project files for this will be available via my Patreon. For the best results when generating your distance fields, you'll want to start with as large a texture as you can get your hands on. Generate the distance field and then scale it down to a performance-friendly size. For example, here I'm using a 4K texture, and I'll scale that down to 256 or 512 using bicubic resampling before importing it into Godot. Now that we have a distance field texture to work with, let's write a shader that'll make good use of it. The most basic way to use the distance field is in place of a regular alpha texture. So let's sample the distance field and use that as our alpha, and set our alpha clip threshold to 0.5. And there we can immediately see the sharp and clean curves we were looking for. For comparison, here's what it would look like if we were using a standard alpha texture at the same resolution as our distance field. Now that's already a good result, but sharp edges aren't the only benefit of using distance fields. Having distance information to work with actually enables us to do all sorts of cool new things that we wouldn't be able to do with a standard alpha mask. Let's start by adding a thickness parameter. The easiest way to do this is to add a parameter that sets the alpha clip threshold, but instead I'm going to use a smooth step because we'll need it later. So let's send our thickness parameter into the first two inputs of the smooth step, followed by our texture sample. I'm going to invert this value so our thickness works more intuitively, with a higher value producing a thicker result. And here's what it looks like. This is really useful for adding bold or thin versions of fonts without needing to create any additional assets. Next, let's add a new parameter for feathering the edges of our glyphs. Let's call that softness and subtract it from the first input of the smooth step and add it to the second. Let's also throw away the alpha clip threshold. Now we have an even more flexible shader with variable thickness and feathering. Another common thing to add is an outline, which we can get by copying the smooth step from before and replacing the thickness and softness parameters with some new ones, which I'll call outline thickness and outline softness. We can then use the result to blend between two colors at the output. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's possible once you're working with distance fields instead of standard alpha masks. For your own implementation, you could try adding a drop shadow with variable softness, or a gradient input to give you extra control over outlines and glows. Check out my video on gradient maps for more information on how that might work. 
Here's the final result I ended up with. I've used multiple layers of mesh on top of one another to assemble a more complex graphic, and expanded my shader to use the vertex color of each shape as the base albedo color. I'm also using the alpha channel of the fill and outline colors to control the emissive brightness, which is how I got this neon look. Importantly, this variety comes without the need to create additional texture assets. It's all possible because we're using sine distance fields. And that's it for this video. But it's probably not the last time you'll hear me talking about distance fields because I use them all the time and they're just really useful. As always, the project files for this video will be made available to patrons via Patreon. If you'd like to get your hands on them, or if you just want to buy me a coffee for making cool videos, then you can do that via my Patreon page. The link is in the description. If you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. And finally, thank you very much for watching.